What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. I had to make sure my microphone was on. So you guys know, I, I, well, I don't know if I'm, you want to call it that. I'm looking a hot mess, but I feel like I'm looking like a hot mess. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just really don't look that, like my best, my best. And why is my Christmas tree like not in into the camera? There we go. Get, get some of that Christmas tree. So anyway, I'm going to do my makeup because I'm going to do um, some wig videos today. Like, that's all I ever freaking do. And I'm going to have to change it up because I'm definitely going to have to change it up from wig videos. But I'm going to do some really, really cheap wig videos today um, for the company um, Hera Remy. I know you guys see me do one video for them, but I did just finish doing one this past weekend. So, and it was a $20 wig. All right, so I'm going to do the other two that I have um, left to do today, too. As you know, I just like to get it out the way. I like to get it over and done with. And if you guys have not seen my latest YouTube video, which was an epic fail, it really was an epic fail for this wig. Like, I tweezed the hell out of this wig to where it had... It wasn't even just like a bald spot. It was like a bald across, you know what I'm saying? Like, bald across a a ball halo across the entire front like I got so into tweezing and I just went overboard not good not good at all so yeah um make sure you guys watch that um because I did show you guys everything from um I just showed you guys everything from the ball patches to me over tweezing it to um just like it was just a mess but I so I had to definitely change the wig you know what I'm saying but yeah so anyway I'm about to make another wig which I'm so excited about and it's going to look like this one here's twin sister um because I love this wig so much I made it over a year ago um back in November or maybe really I started this wig in October and I finished like very 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 early November maybe like the first week of November I finished making it and I showed you guys how I made it on video from how I got these highlights in it because it's just number 27 color hair um but I didn't really want it to be like really flat because this is the actual color right here not the browns I put I put those brown colors in it um because I just didn't want it to be like one solid flat color I just didn't think that looks really good to me so I'm going to be making another one, this time with a different company. Um, this company is no longer in existence on AliExpress. I used to do videos for them like every week or something like that. Yeah, like every week. So this one here is from March Queen Hair Mall. And I actually worked with them already. So they asked me did I want to do another video. And it's so crazy because I was like looking on um, AliExpress and looking for like the color number 27 hair for the longest. Like, And then I have found some on DHgate. I found some on DHgate. And I was like, all right, I'm going to just put it in my basket until I finish my Christmas shopping. Because, you know, I was like, and I don't really need it right now. But I did want to get it to make it for my trip to New York. You know, I wanted some new fresh hair. Or I just wanted to have, like, this one with me and that one with me. This is 22 inches. So I was like, okay, I'm going to just wait. And so this wig company, March Queen, um, hair more asked me, do I want to do a video? Pick out whatever texture that I wanted. So when I seen that they had number 27, a girl was like, you know what? I'm going to get... I'm going to get the hair from there, so I don't even have to buy the hair. So I got four bundles. I got a, I got two 20s, an 18, a 16, and I think this is a 16-inch closure. Yes. So, hunties. Now, it's a little bit shiny, but, you know, you guys to, like, work with it. So I'm definitely going to tone it. I'm going to use this toner for this because it looks like it's a little bit lighter. Oh, that might really be cute. But I don't like my hair shiny like that because that's, like, ugh. I don't really want to shine like that. So, yes, I'm about to make me another one. Okay, got some new hair dye. Um, same company that I used to make this one, but a different color brown. Because this is like chestnut brown. So, I'm going to use a different color brown. And I'm going to still use dark brown, like dark brown for my roots. 
Because, you know, the closures don't have any dark rooms. I, I, you know what it is, though? I don't like for them to give me the closures that have the um the dark roots on them. I hate that because they'd be just looking like a hot mess. You ever see somebody's closure and it'd be like, they'll have like the really dark roots and that should be like all the way down to here. Like I don't like my dark roots to be all the way down to there. I like them to be like right here, just like right there, like a little tiny bit. And on top of that, some of them be looking like they just sat like a bread box in the middle of their freaking head and just made the, made the roots like that. So I hate that. So I just really don't like nobody to give me a closure that has dark roots on it because it's just too much dark roots and it just be looking like a hot mess so yes i really don't want to use um to do that but i also got some platinum i also got some platinum blonde hair and i got it from um new star hair which i've been working with before too so they told me i could pick whatever color i wanted so they sent me four bundles of their platinum blonde and the closure but the closure was like silver okay i know y'all like wait a minute why is the hair look like okay so i dyed the hair i didn't really dye it but i put some streaks in it just like i did this one so of course it doesn't look that great right now because it's it's just it just looks like this you know what i'm saying it just looks it just looks like this, okay? But once you sew it and you put it together, it blends, the, um, it just blends better. Like the highlights are like, they just look a lot better. So it doesn't just look like this. It just, it doesn't look that great right now, okay? But when I, when I got the hair, it, the hair, the bundles was like a yellowish blonde and the closure was like this very, very pale blonde. So they didn't even match, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just try it out and see. So that's what I did. But look, like, this looks like a silverish blonde, and this looks like a yellowish blonde. So it still didn't work out. But I have some toners for this that I'm about to use. Um, I wanted to show you guys the toner because, hold on. Okay, so this is the toner. I got it from Amazon, and it is um, by Mark Daniels Professional Toner, per Powerful Purple Shampoo and Conditioner Set. I also got this other leave-in conditioner, too, for it, okay? Leave-in conditioner toner, but it's not. it didn't come with this. I had to buy it. I bought it from Amazon, too, but they was from two different sellers. So anyway, I got this because I seen, like, my girl Passion Jones using this in one of her videos for her her hair video which is platinum blonde and it had yellow tones in it and then when she put this stuff on it honeys it made it perfectly pale like platinum blonde so i was like you know what i'm going to get this versus the weller toner that i always be using that i just bought i'm gonna try this out because the weller toner is just more work who wants to do more work like not i said the little piggy pig pig so yes i am not trying to be doing too much but this stuff is not cheap so these two together was i think it was 23 dollars, and then the leave-in toner was like uh, i think it was like 10 dollars or something like that i could be mistaken maybe this is was more than that all i know is i bought all three of them together and it was 36 dollars so you don't get, I mean, you get a nice size amount, but 10.15 um, fluid, 10.14 fluid ounces. And what's crazy is I got to do that wig, the, the um, platinum blonde, and I want to do the honey blonde. And I got two other wigs that I need to use it for. So I hope that shit is enough for all four of the motherfuckers. For real, because, listen. So speaking of my girl Passion Jones, okay, now I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with watching her latest video, well, well maybe not the latest one because she be kicking out, she's been kicking out a lot of videos lately which is amazing because I like to see, be able to see my favorite influencers like doing videos more. You know, because I hate waiting for videos so I like to see them like pump out those videos. So let me tell y'all, I watched one of her videos which was is recent. And she got Glow Nista Highlight. Super affordable, $10, okay? So I love to support everybody. And I love me some Passion Jones. Like, seriously, like, I love her. She's amazing. Her personality. You know, we both from New York. So we both have, like, that kind of, like, edgy, no-filter personality. But I just love her so much. And I'm just so proud of her. And just so, I just love her. I'm in love with her. But anyway, so she got this Glonista Highlight 
um, collection out. That is hers. And she got four highlights in the collection. Super affordable. And they were only $10. So a bitch bought all four of the collections. These are so cute. Like the packaging. And yes, they were not sent to me. I paid for these. Okay? I paid for these. Because like I said, I love to support people. So they are so pigmented. Like for real. I do have me in a video showing them off. Like, you know, sampling. Trying them on for each, each one. Girl, by the time I'm done, I am so glowed up. Alright? But let me tell y'all. I love the packaging. It's all gold. Okay? And they're loose. Which makes it a lot easier. So get yourself like a really nice fan brush. I have several different size fan brushes, so I would suggest the thinner ones. But definitely check her, her line out. They are so pigmented, like, for real. I love to see people do, like, like, like positive things. Like, for real, like, get your glow on, honey. Get your, make that your money, you know what I'm saying? So, look at that one. This one is 24 karat gold. Why is she down here? Yes. What? Okay, so the plumber guy is here, you guys. I'll be right back. All right, you guys. So, as you guys heard, I have a plumber here because um, a couple days ago, as I was dyeing the hair, the platinum blonde hair, you know, it's time to rinse it out. So, I was rinsing it out in my sink, just one bundle at a time because I just didn't feel like bending over. And if you see me keep looking back, it's because I'm looking to see if the plumber guy is going to come upstairs because he has to check my sink. But, um, so I was rinsing it out in the sink and I had the dark color hair, the dark color roots, and so the water was like a blackish color. This probably took me like 10 minutes. So by the time I was done, I was like, oh my God, let me go downstairs and check my fried chicken because I had forgot that I was frying chicken. Not really necessarily forgot, but I felt like... I did kind of forget. So by the time I got downstairs in the kitchen, I have like a double kitchen sink. The whole two kitchen sinks were full of like this black water, which was hair dye. And then underneath the sink was like this huge puddle onto my floor. So somehow the pipe had like come loose and the water from upstairs came and filled my sinks up, my sink up in the kitchen. And so like I haven't been able to use my bathroom sink up here because of you know I just really didn't know so they had sent somebody out today to take a look at it so the line something is wrong with the line is backed up so if you guys see me go in and out like you know stop or whatever that's because the plumber guy's here and I don't really know how I feel about him being in my room while I'm recording but then again I really don't care but, so anyway as I was saying I was talking about passion stuff so this was the um that was the one that I first showed you guys with the 24 karat glow, which is so pretty. Um, $10, you get a lot of product for real, like seriously. It comes with a little sifter top. They come in this cute gold bag, like for real. Her packaging is amazing. That's the 24 karat. This is Glow Nista, which is like a lighter color gold. And I think, I think like this one is my favorite. I'm not, I'm, I think like they're all my favorite. I'm not really sure. I really can't choose because they're all like really so pigmented. So like, you see that? Like for real. And then this one is the Rose Glow, which is like my favorite too. Um, you know, I, I don't even know. I like them all. I like everything. Not everything, but I love um, like highlight, especially if it's glowing. Like... I love glow and highlight. So this is the rose glow, which is just as pretty. And then the last one is bright and bougie. This one is actually definitely my favorite. I love this one the most because of the color. It's just so freaking pretty. And it kind of reminds me of um, the rose one a little bit, but just a little bit lighter. So it goes just nice. I think they all go nicely with every color skin tone. So, and this is the bright and bougie, okay? So for $10, you get like this amazing amount of product, okay? Which is great, like, so... I'm going to be putting that on in this video, for real. Um, I've been wearing it a lot lately, ever since I got it. And I wanted to post a picture on Instagram, but I just haven't been around to um, posting anything. I don't know. Sometimes I'm not in the mood to do, like, certain shit or just shit at all. But I also wanted to say thank you to all of my divas for sending me all of these, like, amazing Christmas cards. For my girl, Bonita, thank you so much from loving me. Thank you so much. Okay. Also from Mrs. Elephant in Chicago. 
thank you so much um vanita oh shoot i did not even know vanita sent me two cards yes yeah, so she sent me two cards thank you um my boy rich lux um and i'm not sure if you guys know who rich lux is but he is like a drama queen okay he is a drama queen i'm um, not even a drama queen like that but he does like the gossip of all the youtubers or celebrities on youtube and he has blown up within the past a little bit of time that he's been here on youtube so he sends me postcards and thank yous that just shout me out and i love him like he's amazing so i want to send him some love because he just moved into his um into a new place and got himself a new little setup so I'm happy for him and he lives right in the neighboring state to me which is Texas so yes I definitely would like to run into him one day he's a sweetheart but he's so funny you ever meet somebody that you not even meet them but you see them on like YouTube or TV and they're just like so hilarious and you want to meet them like you, you want to see like what's their personality in real life but then sometimes you can tell just by from watching them all the time like this is how they act all the time like that's how I know that he's like that and just like for me I'm just like this all the time like I cuss a lot in real life because that's just what I do um, I'm funny I don't well I don't think I'm funny but I'm fun like I like to have fun okay people think I'm funny but I don't really think I'm that funny I mean like I'll crack jokes on you and stuff but you know and I just like to relax and chill so like that's just me in real life and I'm just like a really friendly person like I speak and talk to everybody even if you don't know me and we just meet in a grocery store like I will just talk to you um, and this one here is from Anna from Fall River, Massachusetts. I think this MA, Fall River, okay? Thank you. And then also my girl Vanita. So she sent me this box last week and I was waiting so patiently to show you guys because I wanted to tell her thank you on camera, but also because I just wanted to show you guys. And Mumsy hurried up and took her stuff and ran off, okay? Like when I say she took her stuff and ran the fuck off, she took her shit and ran the fuck off with it. Like, so I don't even know what she did with it, but she sent me like this huge box of stuff, like some goodies. And I know, I know this is for Mumsy because Mumsy loves Paris. So she did send her this which is so cute I said oh you can hang this on the Christmas tree she was like do I really have to because I don't want to put that on a tree I don't want nobody taking it and it getting destroyed I was just like okay so what are you gonna do with it she's like I'm gonna put it on my little dresser and stuff and I'm gonna do this with it I was like okay you ain't got to put it on a Christmas tree I get it but Mumsy is wanting to go to Paris so me and her are gonna go to Paris one day in the near future so I hope in the near future so yes i just feel so weird to have to keep looking back like looking back because my door is open and stuff and i keep having to look back and look back so um and i don't know if the plumber guy knows what i do so i know when he came in my room he's seen the lights and stuff but you know some people don't pay any mind so i don't really want him to be like oh i didn't even see these oh so these are for mumsy okay so she got some little fashion errands which is so cute these are girly you ever see like these teenagers not even teenagers but these little girls these days they just be putting on the most grownest shit like if you 10 let them be 10 okay don't let them grow up too fast got them on wedges and heels and stuff like i don't know there goes sugar i'm just so old-fashioned i just like kids to be kids and let them be kids for as long as possible because you have all the time in the world to be grown and I'm telling you guys what, being grown is not that much fun all the time because it comes with paying for shit and paying for bills. So I'm not like, you know, I don't I don't be trying to rush my kids to grow up. This is a tea light holder, orange and cinnamon scented tea lights. Okay, first of all, I love when people know me so well, sometimes even better than my own self. And it's amazing how you can just tell somebody something like once or twice or just mention it and then they know like they know what you like so this is a buddha okay and what's so crazy is it matches my living room decor because for one i love buddhas for two i have silver and gold in my living room so this okay i've been waiting for i did not know it was orange but i've been waiting to show you guys this for like the longest i mean a week is not that long but it's long enough for me because i wanted to I wanted to show it off, so I'm trying to get it out of this box, okay? Isn't it cute? You put the little tea light in the back right here, and I got some other scented tea lights, too, that someone sent me a while ago, and then it just glows through the um through the body of the, the Buddha. So pretty. Like, this is so pretty. Like, I'm, like, 
Yes, now I'm about to put this up. Oh, and I got some I got some Buddhas yesterday at the Dollar Tree, okay? The Dollar Tree. Of course, they're not that pretty. Definitely not pretty like this, but I got some spray paint, and I'm going to spray them silver and gold, and hopefully they'll look just as nice as this. Well, I just, I doubt it will, but, you know, you never know. But this is so pretty because it has, like, the holes in it, and it's, you see, the, oh, man. I love Buddhas. I, I'm like a big, huge fan of Buddhas. So I have them all through my house. It's like the feng shui of my home. Okay, the feng shui. I love I love a good feng shui. All right. And it's not even feng shui, but I don't like nobody to kill my vibe. Okay, really, I don't. Then she sent me, oh, okay, so I didn't know who these were for, all right, so, wow, Nay never gets anything, well, she does get stuff, but she's never gotten anything from anyone before that sends us packages, and I seen these Betsy Johnson socks, low cut, and I thought they was for me and Muggsy, because, you know, we always stay fighting, but we buy ourselves a bunch of socks, but Nay loves socks, and she said that in quite a few of our videos. These, she actually said, are for Nay Nay, so I definitely have to take a picture this this is a lot of damn socks 10 pairs this is amazing and they thought these i told nay about it and she was like oh that's so cute wait until i show her who they're for so bonita thank you so much because this is the first time she's ever gotten anything from any one of my divas so she is going to be so happy because she has been working hard with me doing these videos these fashion haul videos so i know she is going to be <gasps> Oh my god. She is going to be so happy. Okay, Bonita, have you been in my house lately? Like you have you been spying because did she send me You know what's so funny guys? I wish I could show you, but then I have to take the whole you know what? Maybe if I turn the camera, hold on. Then I have to turn the light off. Okay. I'm gonna turn the light off so you guys can see first. I'm going to have to zoom in real quick. Do you guys see that shoe right there? It's the same one. Okay, and I love shoes so much that I bought it. It's a Christmas decor, but I never hung it on the Christmas tree. I bought it to actually um, post right there. And that's so funny. That is so freaking funny. Because now I got another one. I got I got two, okay, so this is like so fucking funny. Like now, you know what? Bonita is about to be my new bestie, for real, because she knows me better than everybody. Like seriously, like that's so fucking crazy. Like she, I think Bonita is got a hidden camera in my house somewhere and um, she's been spying on me because too freaking funny. Like, wow. Um, Bonita, I'm going to need you to not keep, okay, not did not see this in here, but, um, you see what I'm saying? When a person knows you so well, they know what fucking hairspray you like. And I told you guys all the time that this is my favorite. I stay stacked up, stocked up on some Aussie Insta Freeze in the aerosol can. You guys have to get this one. If you don't get this one, then I don't know what to tell you. Like, everybody is like, oh, I'm going to get that um, got to be freeze one in a yellow can. Let me tell you, I got that one too. That shit don't get like this. This work. This works. That got to be freeze don't work. This works. Okay. This is like 10 times better than the got to be, the got to be shit. Got to be not having that. Okay. And then, okay. So Mumsy did leave her stuff. Okay. She did leave her thing. Okay. All right. So what is this? Mumsy didn't even show me. She took something out of here though. I don't know what she took out of here. Oh, uh, okay, so it's part of it. She got herself a hot chocolate mug, and inside of it was some hot chocolate, okay? And she been, you know what's so funny about this? Every time we go to, like, the 99 cents only store, feeling happy. She always be like, oh, I want one of those um, emoji mugs. I want one of those emoji mugs. And I was like, for what? You, you always wanted something. No, I'm not buying it. So, oh, but I, why not? Why not? I want one. I love, I love, no, no, no. You don't need it. That's what I be telling her all the time. You don't need it. She she wants everything. She wants every freaking thing imaginable. So, 
Thanks, Vanita, because she must have wrote you and told you that I was not about to get her one. Because she has a whole bunch of shit in my house all the time. So, yeah. So, anyway, so about, let's get into this real talk. Um, so that way, it, I did not realize that last week's video was almost two hours. And I do apologize because I would never want to force you guys to be sitting there with me for so long waiting to, um, I don't know. I guess it's because I was doing my makeup and on top of that, I was talking about myself. And I, I like to talk about myself. Who don't like to talk about themselves? Like, I'm just saying. Now, I did get a comment last week talking about, in my real talk, talking about, this is, it's called setting spray because it's made for after you, you do your makeup. But no, sweetheart, I did tell you in the, in the video, spray before or after your makeup application to keep your face fresh and flawless. So it doesn't necessarily have to be after. It can be before, okay? And I spray this on my whole damn body if I want to, only because it smells so fucking good. It's slay all day, and this is the peach scent. Okay, so let me tell you, that shit smells amazing. And then also, I got some Glonista, which is the diamond setting spray by my girl Passion Joes. Now, this I didn't pay for. She sent this to me because this is from her new line. And um, let me tell y'all, it's got like these little infused diamonds in it. And I think it's just like... It smells good too, but I like the sparkle that it puts on my face, so that's why I'm putting it on my face right now, because it doesn't give it like a lot of sparkle like that, but you can see like a couple little glitters. You, you can't see them, but I can, and that's all that matters. So, yeah, that's all that matters. But, you know, this week I'm not putting a whole bunch of shit on my face, a whole bunch of makeup. Last week I had, like, the worst experience with the fucking lighting in my bathroom. Then I was using, like, my vlogging camera. So, you know, I'm not doing all of that this week, okay? But I am going to tell you guys this much. I'm going to go back to trying this palette out because I actually did use it over the weekend. And it's the, the ATN, what is it, Um, the ATN Ortega palette. Um, by Pure. It really is a good neutral palette. It all depends on your eyeshadow base that you use. So I'm going to use something a little bit more vibrant. But before we even get into all of that goody good good stuff, let's start with this real talk. If you guys need a real talk about yourselves, meaning <clears throat> if you have um, an, a real talk issue or you need to talk about a real talk issue because you know somebody that got some bullshit with them, or you yourself got some bullshit with yourself, then you can always go ahead and send me an email to muffinsismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, Real Talk, so that way I know that this is an official Real Talk. And then, you know, if you want to change the names, of the people in your email meaning your name is April but you don't want everybody to know because you're like the only April in the world and they'll definitely know it's you you could always say well I went ahead and changed the names etc etc if you don't do that you just give me the email with the names in it sometimes I automatically assume that you didn't change the names and I'll just change them for you or I might be that day where I don't assume that or I'm not just thinking because sometimes I don't think and I just use the name. But I guarantee you that regardless, people are going to not know. Well, you know something? That's not really true because I did this real talk like right before I went to New York. And the girl was talking about her fiance. And she would watch this video. I did her real talk. And she would watch this video every day, no matter what. She would watch this video every day, all, all the time. And she would start, she wasn't eating as much. She would just drink shakes, et cetera, et cetera. Well, why did her fiance email me? And he knew it was him she was talking about. And so it was just like, it was a really happy ending. Okay, so that's what it was. It wasn't anything like bad or anything like that. It was a really happy ending, real talk. And so I can't say that for 100% sure that person is not going to know it's you but i mean like even if i change the names who's not going to assume because everybody there there's a million and five people in the world there's really more than that but i'm just saying that as an example so i'm pretty sure that a lot of us have the same situations as others you know or they're very similar 
So yeah, so like I was saying, you can go ahead and please put in the subject line of the real talk, um, of the email real talk. So that way when I put, when I go in my email and I type in, in the search real talk, it'll definitely come up. You know, see, that's the main reason why I do that. Um, so when I go to my email and I type in real talk, all the real talks will come up. So on that note, let's get into this real talk. Okay. Now trust and believe, I'm not going to leave my eye looking like this. I know it looks crazy, but trust and believe. This is just so the eyeshadow can pop, but trust and believe, I'm still not going to leave it looking like this. Okay, definitely. Okay. She didn't even say hi. She just went straight to the point. So I'm going to speed through the basic information to get to the dilemma. I met and married my husband at 26. He had two baby mothers and at the time, at the time, and a crazy mom. He has custody of his oldest daughter. Baby mom was on crack and ended up in prison. The other baby mom was a booty call, per her words. He pays child support to baby mama number two, which is the baby mama booty call baby mama. Um, but she is always wanting more. I have a daughter from my husband who means the world to the both of us. She is 12 years old. She is a, um, she is a certified junior lifeguard. She was, two th she was 2016 Swimmer of the Year. She is in all honor, all honor classes and maintains a 3.5 GPA. Oh, and she plays basketball in the offseason for the middle school and is a great player. My husband's oldest daughter barely finished high school, now has no motivation to do anything extra with her life. She works but won't get a driver's license, won't keep her room clean, and that bathroom is horrific. I have talked to her about life and even, attend and even attending a trade school or other avenues to establish a career. I understand college isn't for everyone, but she doesn't seem interested. Then we have my husband... Then we have my husband's son, who is, a, who is great at football. He is an average student, but struggling in English. His mom babies him and feels all problems he has is someone else's fault. He is two years away from graduation. My husband is involved at all school functions, talks to him about the importance of school and education. But when the son goes back home, all that goes out the window. The dilemma my daughter has described above... Um, my, excuse me, the dilemma my daughter, as described above, is on point. She works hard at keeping her grades above average. She keeps her room clean, does her chores, and is respectful to others and to the both of us. The problem is my husband is very hard on her. Doesn't, given her, doesn't give her any breathing room when it comes to school and sports. I go to bat for my daughter because her report cards, academic awards, and scoreboards speaks for themselves. I feel my husband needs to lighten up and focus his energy and time on the first two children, which is his son and his daughter. How do I get him to see that the youngest isn't the problem and to give her a break? Mrs. Confused. So... That's so crazy because you know something I noticed this a lot and it's not even just that um, I don't be like that though with um, my daughter Johnna because she's like she has like the highest grades I've ever seen and if she gets like a 95 or a 90 that girl is so upset like I remember when I was in high school and I was getting 90s I would girl I would probably brag to everybody about it but if I got like a 75 I was happy with that but you know School isn't for everybody, and certain shit isn't for everybody, but I feel that way, like, with Nay, she works hard, she plays sports, she does a lot of things that, like, my other kids haven't, do um, haven't like, done, and it's so crazy because I have never, like, told her to play sports, I have never, like, you know, like, forced her to do, like, you know, sports or anything like that, but she just very, very, um, She's just very motivated. And then right behind her is Mumsy, who's just the same. But Mumsy has her days when she don't want to be bothered with school either. And like I said, I guess it's not for everyone. You know what I mean? Like, school isn't for everyone. But I understand. It seems like with, with some families, like, when you have, like, one kid that's, like, really, really smart or just, like, really, really outgoing or just, like, really good at a lot of things... Or just, you know, like an A1 kid, an A1 student. We really push them hard. And you know what? So sometimes that will push them away, especially if they feel like they're forced to do it. Like, I know with my, my daughter Nay's friends, 
um, her, she has a one friend, and I'm not going to say her friend's name, but she lives over here in Garden Lakes where we live at. Her friend's mother won't let her do anything that she wants to do, meaning she makes her go to cheer. She makes her go to dance. She makes her do all these things. And if she was to come over and hang out with Nay, or like on the weekend, she can only do that for like an hour or 30 or 30 minutes. So like, it's like, why even bother sending her over here for 30 minutes? Because that doesn't make any sense. So, and then what makes it so bad is the girl is smart. She's taken her out of regular high school and just put her in like this high school that prepares you, I think for college, just like in this little kind of building. And I think like the girl is kind of like, she's, she's very smart, but she's also very miserable because I do notice like when she comes over to my home that she's always saying stuff about her mom makes her do this or makes her do that. And you know, she gets tired of it because she just wants to be like a normal teenager. And like, now mind you, Nay is only 15 years old. So, you know, they like to do teenager things, but at the same time, you got those 15 year olds who like to do teenager things and hang out with their little friends at the mall and then go to school and do their work and not fresh. Then you got the other ones that are just like teenagers from fucking hell and think they like 30 years old and just be disrespectful to everybody around them, including their own selves. And they just don't give a fuck about shit. So you got, we got like, we got a bunch of different kind of teenagers in the world, which is unfortunate, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So I understand when parents want to be a little bit hard or too hard or very hard on their kids because we don't want them to end up being like a bunch of flunkies or shit like that. Now, What's so crazy is you got the one daughter of Mrs. Confuse, her, her her stepdaughter, which is her husband's daughter from, I think this is baby mama number one. And she, um, she is, what is she, 20 years old? She's old enough, okay? I'm still looking out for the plumber because I'm just trying to see where he's at. Um... She's got this one, um, daughter barely finished high school now. Okay, so my husband, my husband's oldest daughter, so this is from baby mama number one. This is the baby mama who has been a crackhead and is in jail. She, um, his daughter has barely finished high school, has no motivation to do anything extra with her life. She, um, she won't get a driver's license. She won't keep her room clean and the bathroom is horrific. She has to talk to her about life and attending a trade school or other avenues to establish a career. She no understands that college is not for everyone. I'm still looking out for the honey I get where you coming from because let me tell you something it seemed like no matter how hard you try to talk to these kids that are are like in their 20s or early 20s and just finished high school and you try to tell them something for their own good like you know you need to go to school you need to do this or you need to better yourself get some motivation and do this because I'm not gonna be here for the rest of my life etc etc they act like you making them like they act like you forcing them to do a fucking bank robbery like on some real shit like for real they act like you forcing them to do a bank robbery. now when I say they act like you forcing them to do a bank robbery I'm mean that literally because they act like you are you're forcing them to give blood to every motherfucking homeless person in the goddamn world and i say this because for one i have five kids all right five motherfuckers up in my that came out of me all right so five kids and I'm not going to say they all like this because they not, but I will tell you this. When she talked about her husband's oldest, I thought she was talking about my own damn oldest daughter, for real, too. Because she she described mine, the, she described that girl the same way as I described my own, okay? Now, mind you, I understand when you have kids because, you know, I have a grandson who's two. I understand we have to do sometimes what we need to do for our kids just so that they can be taken care of. Why do I swear I keep hearing this damn plumber? Okay, I didn't, but I'm bugging out. So, you know, I understand when we have kids at young ages, we have to do what we need to do. But one of the things that we need to continue to do is to further our education. So that way our children that we had at a young age will understand that nothing stopped us from furthering our education, which helps in the long run of being able to take care of our own child. Now, let me tell you all something. Like I said, I thought she was describing my own daughter to a T because she is 21. She has my grandson that lives here with us. And that room that they have is horrific, okay? A mess. And that bathroom is so funny because yesterday was Monday. Because you know, on Tuesdays, I record my real talk. I went, I had to go and take a shower in that bathroom because... 
what did I tell y'all? My bathroom was messed up. My sink was messed up. So I was kind of scared to take a shower in my, my bathroom too because I didn't know if the sink downstairs was on overflow. I wasn't trying to take no chances. So what's so funny is I went in to take a shower and I know my daughter Nay, the 15 year old, she always is complaining to me about that bathroom. And she'll come in here and use mine. So I had to be forced to take a shower in that bathroom. When I went in there, there was hair all behind the door or on the floor. Let's just put it like this. It was horrific and I wasn't going for it, okay? So I had to go off on her about the bathroom and let her know, you're going to clean the motherfucking bathroom. Because that's your hair, not Nay and Mumsy's hair. Because you know their hair is in braids. So I had to say some shit about that and about the fucking room. Because listen, at the end of the day, this is my motherfucking house. I might not I might not own the shit, I might not have a deed to it, but I paid the full rent to live up in this motherfucker. So every bedroom and room up in here that's utilized belongs to me. Whether I whether or not I'm using it, it still belongs to me because I pay one hundred percent of this motherfucking rent. So I went off about that and then I had to go downstairs to my son and go off to him about his room also and my garage. So this is how I was saying it. I was like my motherfucking bathroom is like the not my bathroom, but one of the bathrooms. It's like the bathroom at the motherfucking gas station and my fucking garage looked like a trap house. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I had to go off. And it seems like when you go off, they think that you the bad guy. Like, you try to spare people feelings like I told y'all last week and be nice and just spare their feelings because you don't want to hurt nobody's motherfucking feelings. But when you be sparing motherfuckers feelings for too long, they will walk all over you like you are the fucking welcome doormat in the front door and be wiping their feet on you at the same motherfucking time. So after a while, that shit gets to be very, very annoying and shit. And then you just go the fucks off. Well, that's what a bitch did yesterday. So I went the fuck off and I just said to them, if nobody likes it, there's three exits. There's the motherfucking garage exit, the front door, and the back door. Take one if you don't like it and you can fucking leave because I don't got time for this bullshit. So when Mrs. Confused described her stepdaughter, I could have sworn she was, you know, describing my own. It's funny how we have so many things in common as people and we don't even realize that shit. But then yet again, we go, we, we go off on one another and we belittle one another when... We have the same bullshit going on in our own backyards. So then she has her son, her stepson, who, you know, he just a spoiled little motherfucker by his mother. She think that everything that goes wrong in this little boy's life is nobody's fault but his. Let me tell you something. And then it's the father, her husband, who's really hard on the 12-year-old, like breathing down a little girl's back. Let me tell you something. I bet you I know why. He's breathing down her back, Mrs. Confused, is because he don't want her to turn out like neither one of his other two children. That's the fuck why he's breathing down her fucking back like that. And I can totally understand and get it. You know what I'm saying? Because for one, I'd be the same fucking way with John A and Mumsy because like I said, I have five of them and these are my two last children. And I expect them to over exceed and over achieve anything that the other three haven't because they just have not fucking listened to me. So I do be a little bit hard on her as well. But let me tell you something. There's a time and a place for everything. And also, <clears throat> I'm going to use some of this Glonista to spritz my brush down. Because I did already before. There is a time and a place to um, for all of that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, meaning, everybody want their kid to succeed. We all do. I know I want all my kids to succeed in life. And just be the best that they can be, for real. Because then why why wouldn't we? Why 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 fucking wouldn't we? You know what I mean? Like we all want our children to succeed and to be something in life and you know and I get that. However, I think what it is with your husband is he's just afraid that your daughter who's twelve is gonna slack off. You know what I mean? And he doesn't want to see that. He's trying his best just to make sure that she doesn't end up like those two. And the only way he knows how is to breathe down her back. But sometimes that could be like very, very deterring from a child. Because then they'll be like 
they don't want to do it just like my daughter Nay's friend she liked doing cheer she liked doing dance and she liked doing that stuff but then when her mom was just like started to be really forceful about it she just became uninterested especially when she just want to hang out and come over and eat popcorn and watch movies and just laugh and do like little girly things and go to the mall and go to Claire's and go to Forever 21 and do that shit this is what they like to do these kids this is this is what the fuck they like to do as as teenagers and I, I get it I totally get that like you know that's that's the shit that I used to like to do I mean I really didn't get to do it as much but you know what I'm saying? I get that. That's what the fuck young girls, some of them, not all of them, but some of them, that's what they like to do as children. So I understand that. But when you be so forceful sometimes to a child and you just like forcing them, like it's one thing to encourage them. And I don't know, maybe he doesn't realize that he's not encouraging her, but he's just like being very forceful. It's one thing to like encourage but it is a difference when you encourage and then you you force. You know what I'm saying? So, like, maybe you should have a talk with him. I mean, you definitely have to because that's your guys' children together. Okay? That's you guys' children together. I hate when my lashes get, like, the white stuff on them. And it's nothing but eyeshadow that I just put on my, my eyes. But I hate that because these people be like, oh, you should change your lashes. They're old. They get like this the very first day that I put the lashes on because it's eyeshadow. And I wear individuals, so there's no way for me to take them off every fucking night. But, you know what I'm saying? But I hate when it happens. So I have to, I try to, um, like, cover it up with black eyeshadow. But that doesn't always work. Oh, I'm like, what is that noise? He must be doing something to the pipes downstairs because he said he thought they was backed up. And I heard this, and I'm like, wait a minute. Is somebody doing something to the sugar? Because I was about to go in. But it's, it sounds like he's cutting the, the plastic PVC pipes. I hate those cheap-ass pipes. They are worthless. But anyway, you're definitely going to have to have a talk with your husband and let him know. Like, it's one thing to encourage her. Because we want to encourage our children at all times. I think like it's really important to give them words of encouragement. And I think it's like really important to encourage our children, even if it's a career that you don't really like fully agree with, like meaning like say your, your kids wanted to be a police officer. And of course you don't want them to be, maybe you don't because you don't want them to get killed or you just have fears of things like that. But in reality, you still do need to encourage them because that may be something that they want to do. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that you want to do. But I think, like, it's always good to encourage your kids, even if that's something that you don't really agree on. And I'm not, when I say something that you don't agree on, I don't mean, like, something negative. Like, like okay, so your kids say, I want to be a serial killer when I grow up. Don't encourage that type of shit, but you know what I'm saying. Encourage the positive shit. I should I should just said that. Encourage the positive shit. Definitely encourage the positive positive things that your children do because we want to make them aware that we're listening and we're there for them. You know what I mean? And even if it's a positive move that you don't agree with, meaning it's something positive, like meaning I want to do this as a career, as I want to be a doctor or a lawyer. But you, yourself, don't like that type of career. You still need to encourage them because that's what they want to do. And that's a positivity. You know what I mean? We can't always be like, we can't always get what we want. We, our children, as much as we want our children to be what we want them to fucking be, trust me, they ain't. Because if that was the case, we'd all be what, what the hell our parents wanted us to be. I mean, I would have been a lawyer like my mother wanted me to be, okay? Because that's what the hell she wanted me to be. I guess I'm good with arguing with motherfuckers and shit. And I should have did that shit because, you know what? I do like to argue with people. And it ain't even that I like to argue with people. It's just that I like to get my fucking point across at all means necessary. And that's just, that's just what the fuck I like to do. I like to get my goddamn point across. Okay. But I think that you should really have a good, good old fashioned talk with your husband and let him know that, you know, your daughter, you guys' daughter, she understands what she needs to do. That's why she's doing it. At 12 years old, and you've achieved all of that, like a lifeguard, 
bitch, I can't even motherfucking swim, okay? And y'all motherfuckers know that I can't even fucking swim. But this little 12-year-old guy, she's achieved that for as a lifeguard. Listen, her ass need to come over here and teach me how to fucking swim. I'll be the first one to be like, no, no, no. Yes, so you really need to have a talk with him and let him know, like, listen, I'm just fucking up my eye. Don't tell him that, but she already know what she needs to do because it's so, a 12 years old, if she's doing all of that, then shit, she good because some 12-year-olds, they don't even give a fuck about none of that stuff, okay? They want to just sit outside and play, drink lemonade, go to the mall, get some toys, and go have a ball. You know what I'm saying? Watch some SpongeBob because that's what they do, right? I mean, like, I don't know what 12-year-olds do because I only have a 10 year I have a 10-year-old, but I'm pretty sure that it's like the same concept. They like to do like, right? Just about the same things together, I would think. If you're doing all of that at the age of 12, like then I, I give her kudos. So I really think like talking with your husband and letting him know, like, listen, give her some breathing space because she's doing what she's supposed to do. She's overdoing what she's supposed to do and not saying that she's overdoing it. But at her age, you need to explain to him some kids at the age of 12 don't do half the things that she does. So she's achieved a lot. And he and let him know, like, I understand that you want her to be all that she can be. You want her to progress and you want her to outstand and be outstanding. And I understand that. But sometimes we have to just allow them to make room for mistake because if we force our kids to do things in life, they ain't going to want to do the shit, okay? It seems like the more you force your kid to try to do something or anybody, they just rebel, okay? Which sucks because they just fucking rebel. So I think, like, you need to tell him, give her the encouragement, not breathe down her back. Because sometimes people don't know the difference. He may feel like he is giving her encouragement by breathing down her fucking back and attending everything and being there and being strong and being hard on her. But that shit is not encouragement. That shit can be so fucking annoying at times, okay? Like when I say annoying, I mean it can be an hindrance. It can be annoying to the point where a person doesn't even want to do that shit anymore because they got you, big papa bear, breathing down their fucking neck. Like for real. And, like, I get it. I try not to, um, this is what I'm going to do to my last and put some eyeliner on. I try not to be breathing down my kids' back like that. Well, not my older kids because, let me tell you something. No matter what you tell a person, you could tell them to you blue in the face all day. Just like with your, your stepdaughter. How you've been giving her words of encouragement to do this and do that. Sweetheart. Trust me, I've been there and done did that, okay? And it don't, it don't matter what you say to them or even if you use your own life as an example so that they can better themselves, it don't work. The person is going to only do what they fucking want to do, okay? And they're going to do it when the fuck they want to do it. They're not going to do it on your time frame. It seems like when they get like a certain age, they think they know every fucking thing and they think like what you're saying is not valid or relevant and like they feel like they can just figure it all out on their own and you know something this is what I have had to do which sucks but you know it is what it is because after a while that shit really wears on a person you know what I'm saying meaning if you constantly telling a person well you need to do this with yourself or you need to do that with yourself or you need to do this and do that that shit wears on you and you just you, 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 you talking too much now. You making your mouth dry. That's what I realized for myself. So it's like, you know what? I'm going to just back the fuck off. And even though you don't want to back the fuck off, you have to back the fuck off and let them figure it out on their own. And when their shit becomes fucked up and they come to you like, you know what? I should listen to you. You can either say, I, I've been told you that. Or you, you don't have to say nothing at all. Sometimes not saying nothing is a the best remedy is the best fucking form of punishment ever. Like, for real. Like, if you just continuously talk to them about the same shit over and over and over again, that shit don't work, honey. Trust me. That shit does not work. So sometimes after a while of trying to say the same thing to them over and over and over again, and you just can't get through, what you need to do is just leave it the fuck alone. Like, for real. Not even say nothing. Because... My mom, I'm thinking I heard something. As a teenager, my mom has told me many things of what to do and not to do. And I'll be the first to admit and say to you guys, 
please. She thought she knew everything. That's that's what I would say because I thought I knew every fucking thing. No, Pamela, Pamela, my mother, she knew more than I fucking knew because let me tell y'all something. First of all, she been around longer than me. She might have made some fucked up mistakes in life, but I guarantee you she knew more the fuck than I did because she been around longer than me. And if she didn't know too much, her ass wouldn't have fuck been there for so long. So I'm pretty sure that my mama knew way more than I gave her credit for. Okay? Seriously, I'm pretty sure my mama knew way more than I would gave her credit for. And that's just because she's my mama and she know more than me. She may not know everything, but she knew more than I did, especially at my youth, my young age as a as a teenager. So I give my mom credit for that. But here's the thing. As for your other daughter, your stepdaughter, honey, let that shit go. Don't stress yourself out no more about it because the more you stress, it's just going to aggravate you. And she either going to get it or not. If her room is a mess and that bathroom is horrific, the only thing you can do, and this is what I, this is what I was thinking of doing. Because after a while, a person can take but so motherfucking much. Go clean that shit yourself. And then when they ask you for something, look at them like they got two motherfucking heads and be like, what? <laughs> I know you just didn't ask me for something. I don't give a fuck what it was. I don't give a fuck if it was a piece of bread. I know you just not ask me for a motherfucking thing. You got to be crazy to be asking me for some shit. Like, for real. You got to really be crazy to be asking me for anything. After I done asked you a million fucking times to clean up that motherfucking room. That's when you look at them. And then you just go, and then you don't even raise your voice. You just go about your business. Because you know what? The more you ask, the more you're going to be aggravated. So why even bother? That's, that's just what I be saying. Why even bother? Cut your ties short. And do the shit yourself. And then when they ask you for something, just look at them like, okay, because that's what the fuck I've had to do. And yes, bitches, I am going to put eyeliner on my lashes because I hate to see the eyeshadow all on my lashes. And this is just the, you know what? It's not even a, the eyeshadow. It's actually the pressed powder that I put on my face. It's the first day I put that shit on my lash, on my, my eye, it stays on my lashes and I can never get it off. And I'm not about to take my lashes off over like the next day. So this is as good as it's going to get. But this is good because perfect. And like I said, as for your daughter, Mrs. Confused, I forgot my favorite brush. Hold on, you guys. And as for your daughter, who's 12, first of all, make sure you congratulate her for her achievement. Because like I said, at 12 years old... That is a lot to achieve. And like I said, my ass can't even fucking swim. So, might be calling your daughter over here. Talking about, let me get some swimming lessons. What's up? Tell your mama I'll make her wig and she give me some, some swimming lessons. Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's serious. Sure. Where's she living at? Let me get some, 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 some swimming lessons and shit. Hook her sister up. Because I don't, I get tired of drowning. Like, nah, I ain't never drowned before, but I'm just saying, I don't think drowning is a fun thing to do. But just have a talk with your husband, though, because I, I see where he's coming from. Sometimes, you know, we feel like if we're so hard on the kids and we keep pushing them and pushing them and pushing them and pushing them and pushing them to do things, that they'll be a success and they won't do the bad things or whatever. But, hey, come on in. Um, But if we keep, like, pushing it and pushing it and pushing them to do, like, the good things, or just pushing them and forcing them to do stuff, then sometimes they just do the bad shit behind our backs and shit. You know what I mean? That's what they do. They just do the bad shit behind our backs because they ain't got no time to do, like, the fun stuff that they want to do, which is, like, get in trouble at the mall and, you know what I'm saying, get caught um, sneaking or passing a note in the classroom. Sometimes they want to do shit like that. And I'm not saying that's fun, but that's just what kids do. But like I was saying, when we put so much pressure on them as children, 
we sometimes push them in the wrong direction, which is kind of fucked up. That's just like, you know, like with my mom, okay? My mom was like, I can't have no boyfriends until I've turned 19 years old. This is what she used to tell me as a kid. She wouldn't let me do nothing. When I say she wouldn't let me do nothing, meaning she wouldn't let me do anything, okay? I couldn't do shit. And then, then she finally, like, like, let go of the ropes a little bit, like, I wouldn't even say it was a rope. That shit was a piece of thread she let go of. She didn't even let go of the whole fucking rope. She, like, untwined a little piece and then let me, like, go on a date with um, my first boyfriend. His name was Freddie. Now, mind you, she liked Freddie because she thought he was respectable. And he was very respectable. But, you know, we she would let me go out. We get to go out to the movies and stuff. Had to be home by, like, 9. It's either 9.30 or 10 o'clock. I, I want to say it was, like, 9.30. You know what I'm saying? Because I was 16. So, I want to say it was, like, 9.30. And, um, so, she wouldn't mind Freddie. She liked him and shit. Okay? Which was cool. Freddie was cool. You know what I'm saying? Freddie had bad breath, of course. Like, but I think I kept Freddie around because my mom liked him so much that I had to like put up with the bad breath because I was like, oh, I finally could get a boyfriend. Even though she said when I was like 18 or 19, I can get a boyfriend. But she liked Freddie and I'm 16. I'm going to keep his bad breath smelling ass around. He was a good person. He was a really good kid. He was on the basketball football team. Um, I can't remember if he did basketball, but his mom was religious and she loved me coming over, you know, when... When I was over her house, she would we would talk and cook dinner together and shit like that. And you know, he was a good kid. Um, but um, you know, even though my mom she allowed me to do those type of things with Freddie, I still wasn't allowed to do like other things like other kids my age could do, like go hang out with my friends or just just shit that my mom was really really strict. So. Because she was so strict, and I understand why, because my mom's mother died when she was 12 years old. My mom was only 12 when her mother died. My mom, you know, she she, she just, you know, that's just how she was. She was really strict, and she really, you know, she didn't understand too many things, because that's how she was brought up by her father. So, because my mom was so hard on me and stuff, you know, I ended up pregnant at 16 by Freddie. He wasn't so respectable then, like, but she still liked him. She didn't know about the, um, you know, she didn't know about it until, like, way after and shit. Um, she just, because she was so, um, because my mom was so strict, I would do things behind her back. You know what I'm saying? You know what's so crazy? I washed this brush because, you know, I love this brush so much, you guys. And so I washed this Eco Tools brush the other day. Why, when you wash something that you really, really fucking like, why does this motherfucker start, like, hairs coming out the shit? Like, what the fuck? Like, I don't really like that shit at all. Like, it's not, it's not making me too happy. And I could definitely go, like, to, to Walmart and get me another one of these brushes, which I think I'm going to today when I pick up Mumsy from school because... Just, and it's so funny because I had this brush for like a couple of years and never used it because I didn't know what the fuck to use it for. And now when I find out what I can use it for and what's been my favorite, now the shit want to act stupid. Anyway. So yeah, so it seems like when we force them to do stuff that we really want them to do and we don't allow them to be a kid at times, then we force them to do shit that we don't want them to do. Meaning, you guys get kind of understand what I'm saying, like, when we're forcing them to be like mini adults, like do this, do that, do this the right way, do that the right way, go to school, go to just do this, do this. And we don't allow them to have too much, and we don't allow them to have too much kid time, like teenager time or just pre-teen time, pre time. Then we kind of like are forcing them to do shit that we really don't want them to do. Like they get tired of us forcing them to do stuff. So they start doing shit behind our backs. And some of that shit that they do behind our backs is not like the best of stuff. Like seriously, like it's the shit that we don't really want them to be fucking doing, which can suck. You know, so I would just have a really serious talk with my husband and let him know, like, listen, I understand that you want our daughter to achieve stuff and be an overachiever. I do as well, but I would like for you to not breathe down her back so well. Maybe not even say those words, but I would like for you to kind of like lessen up on her, babe. Like sometimes that could be like so hard for someone that's 12 to, in, to take in. At 12 years old, 
that's a lot to take the fuck in. I'm just saying, like, I don't know how I would deal with that if that were me as a as a 12 year old. Like, so much disresponsibility. That's a lot for a 12 year old to take in sometimes. So, I would definitely tell him just to, you know, be a little um, less hard on her. Sometimes you gotta say it to men in a certain way because if you say lay lay off a little bit or stop breathing down her back, you know. He might feel some type of way, like, what the fuck did you just say? This is my daughter. So, you know, it's always ways to say shit. And to men, it seems like you got to say them in that certain type of way. So now we're going to move on to the next real talk. Okay, I ain't really trying to be putting too much makeup on my goddamn face because I, I just can't. I just don't like all of that cake face. Now my lips is tangling and shit, too. Mm. Hi, April. Sorry for how long this is, but first off, I want to tell you how dope I think you are. I'm dope, okay? You really inspire me because you don't give a fuck about other people's opinions, and I wish I could be that confident. I always listen to your Real Talk videos while I'm at work, and I absolutely love your family vlogs. Thanking you for just sharing parts of your life with us. I trust you to advise me on this situation because you always keep it real. Even if you don't do the video, I'd love if you could reply with your opinion. You can call me Jade for this story. Me and my boyfriend, let's call him Marcus, are 24 years old. We have been together for about three years, and we've discussed some day getting married we have our ups and downs but overall he makes me happy we've been living together now for about a year officially but really i'd say it's been longer than that what started with him staying over a lot and leaving things over turned into him showering sleeping eating and fully blown living there I genuinely like having him here and wouldn't like it any other way, but it's starting to get to a point where it might be harmful. I've grad I graduated college in 2016 and now am blessed to be working full time in my field, making decent entry level money. When I first met Marcus, he had a car, a job and seemed to have a level head. Unfortunately, he lost his job about four months ago four months excuse me unfortunately he lost his job about four months into us dating i supported him through this but instead of looking for another job he began to volunteer football coaching in his ultimate career path so i've been supportive during the off seasons he played he says he'll get a job okay oh, sorry about that guys so that. he's all done with the plumbing so yeah um so as I was saying, okay, so meanwhile, I'm, okay, so as she was saying, during his off seasons of being a football coach, he says he'll get a job, which he does for a while until he quits. Meanwhile, I'm still supporting both of us with food, shelter, and he has my car while I'm at work, so I'm always paying for extra gas. His car got towed about seven months into the relationship. He says he doesn't want to work for anybody or wake up to, to the job that he hates. I understand he wants to focus on football and coaching, but is it wrong for me to want him to at least get a job during the off seasons? I've never been the type of female to want a man to take care of me, but certainly I don't want to take care of a grown-ass man either. I would love for us to be 50-50, especially since we're not married. This year has been especially hard for me financially, and it's obvious I've been struggling to keep up with bills and even keep food in the fridge. But whenever I try to send him job openings or anything that I think he could do, he gets angry. He complains about everything and refuses to work any job he doesn't like. But when I try to stress to him about how I want to build my credit or how tight the money is, he just tells me not to worry about things I can't control. I love him, and I can see so much potential in him. He's a great coach, and I genuinely believe that he'll make it far with that dream one day. But right now, I feel like I'm the only adult in this relationship. What would you do? Should I make him move out, or should I keep trying to get him to see the big picture? Or am I really the crazy one here? Thanks, Jade. Okay, let me just close my door. Okay, so basically, we got Jade here, who, her and her boyfriend, they live together. They are both 24 years old, and they've been together for three years. Now, mind you, she didn't invite him to live there. It just became where he was spending the night, and then he was sleeping there. He was eating there. He probably moved some of his things in slowly but surely, and then the nigga just didn't fucking leave. Now, when they first were in together, his car was totaled after four months of the relationship. And then, like, within or seven months with the relationship, and he lost no, he lost his job within four months of the relationship and he totaled his car within seven months of the relationship okay so all of this has occurred however 
he wants to be a football coach, which is great. So he volunteers as being a football coach. Great. He's got some type of outlook on life, so I would think. However, when he's not um, coaching voluntarily as a football coach, she wants him and expects him to have a job. So during those off seasons of not football coaching, Marcus should have a job as as she should fit as she feels. First of all, but he's just telling her he don't want to work for nobody. He don't want to wake up and go to no job where he got to work for somebody. Or uh, he don't want to wake up to go to some job he don't like. Or basically, he just don't want to go to some job that ain't his. Okay. Now I get that. Who ain't the? Who don't feel like that? Like. I'm sorry, but all them fucking 11 and a half years I was going to Fidelis waking up to go to their job. Do you really think that I was like, oh, it's 530. It's six o'clock. Yes, bitch. Yes. It's time to get up and go to work for these motherfuckers that be that I'm breathing down my motherfucking back and shit. Like, yes, I'm ready for this. I'm ready. I know. Hell fucking no. I wasn't. I wasn't feeling that way. I wasn't feeling like that at all. I don't. I don't remember there being not one motherfucking day when I felt like, oh, yes, I'm so happy I'm going to work. You know what I'm saying? I went because I I, I, I needed somewhere to fucking live. I needed some food. I like electricity. I love that shit. I like to watch cable. I like um, having a car. I, I definitely like to eat. And I like to wear clothing. Maybe not the nicest clothes in the world, but I do like to put clothing on me and my children's back. You know what I'm saying? And I like toilet paper because I love to wipe my ass. I like shit like that. Like, I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Those are the things that you need in life. So I definitely had to get up and go to work for those reasons. Like, nobody wants to get the fuck up and go to work for nobody. All right? That's just, like, fucking common sense. Who the fuck says, yes, bitch, I'm waking up today at 530 just so I could go to work for time today. I'm so happy because I want to go to work for time. No, bitches, that's not what the fuck we do. That's not what the fuck we want to do. We do the shit. We go to work because if we don't motherfucking go to work, what the fuck else we going to do? We going to be homeless people on the street or we going to just think, um, we just going to fucking assume that some motherfucking body is gonna be like well let me just give april a pocket full of, of a hundreds or you know a case full of hundreds like a big ass suitcase full of hundred dollar bills so because she's so motherfucking cute and she's so motherfucking nice and we just like her freckles that that's what the fuck we gonna do because that's what we gonna fucking do that's not what it is we go to work because we have to fucking go to work because if we don't go to work we ain't gonna be able to wipe our ass because we ain't gonna have no toilet paper we're not gonna be able to do certain shit so we go to work because well let's see we have no motherfucking choice okay but there are some people that just feel like they can just easily be moochers, scoochers, leechers, and whatever else, bleachers. Meaning they're going to bleach your ass for every little bit of time, time, dime, penny, quarter you have. Now, she done told this motherfucker and then been sending him job leads to get a job and shit. Like, get a motherfucking job. And he get angry or whatever. And let me tell you something. What, 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 what the fuck would I do? Would I put him the fuck out? Let me tell you something. First of all, he wouldn't have been around that fucking long. If he ain't got no motherfucking job and I see his ass as being not so motivational and he don't want to do something with himself, he wouldn't have been around that long with me. Mm-mm. Not Pamela Posey's daughter, April. No, sirree. That nigga wouldn't have been around too long. He wouldn't have lasted too long. I tell y'all bitches before, I don't give a fuck how good the dick is or how good the D is. If your ass ain't got no motherfucking potential and you ain't got no motherfucking job and you ain't got no time or you don't even look like you about to get a job in the near future, and I don't mean the far future or the future, near future, meaning... I'm going to just say this present future, meaning because present is today, the present could be tomorrow too. Meaning present future as in tomorrow, then nigga, you has to go. I'm not about to take care of no grown ass man. That's just, I told you guys before, a man with no job is so unattractive. Like seriously, like why would I want to be with some broke ass nigga? Okay. I could be broke on my own. I don't need to be with no broke ass dude. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not saying I'm better than. I'm not saying that I'm a gold digger. I'm not saying that I I deserve all of this and that and this and this and that. But I will tell you this. 
Being with somebody that ain't got no job or don't have no potential or don't have no motivation is a hindrance on you, okay? Because whatever you got, they got. Meaning, whatever little bit of shit that you got, they gonna use that shit the fuck up, okay? Until every little bit is gone, all right? Whatever you got, I want it, okay? And then it sucks. Like, if I were a man, if I was a man, if I were a boy, for real, I wouldn't feel right sitting around allowing some woman to take care of me. Like, that shit is so unattractive. Like, I'm not saying because you a man that you got to do this and you got to do that. But like she said, it's 50-50. And I think that when you're in a relationship, regardless if it's boyfriend and boyfriend or marriage or whatever, if y'all both able-bodied working and able-bodied people, y'all should both work and y'all should both split the cost. 50-50. Now, I understand if one person make more than the other, then maybe that person might pay a little bit more or just might be able to do a little bit more. However, if you got some fucking dude that lay up on your couch all day long or on your furniture or drive your motherfucking car around, let me tell you something, Jade. That nigga driving your car around all day long and he ain't even putting no gas in the shit. That nigga ain't even driving around looking for a job. He's just driving the fuck. Where is he driving to in your car like that all the time? Like, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out because, like, is he look, Is he going to jobs? No, because you ain't say that nigga was going for jobs. He just driving around in your shit all day long. If that was my dude, he wouldn't be my dude for too long because that nigga, I would, mm. I done messed up my freaking eye with that glitter stuff. Um, that freaking. Let me tell you. I'm not about to house and take care of nobody else's grown ass son. Your problem is somebody else's problem. Meaning, that's his mama problem. He want to be a football coach, but he ain't even trying to find no fucking job nowhere. First of all. You never know when opportunity may lie. And I know this much. Opportunities damn sure don't lie at home when you sit on the couch watching fucking Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Feelgood and fucking, um, um, what do you call that, Maury Povich. He ain't going to find no opportunity of being no fucking football coach by sitting on the couch and driving your car the fuck around all the time, okay? That's one thing he's not going to do. Now, two, when you got somebody in a relationship with you and that person don't work, you end up paying more for them than you would be paying if it was just you alone. Meaning, meaning, if it were just you by yourself, your bills wouldn't be so high. Meaning your electric bill wouldn't be so high. Your water bill wouldn't be so high. Your internet or cable bill wouldn't be so high. Your fucking gas for your car bill wouldn't be so high. When you have somebody that sits in your house all day long and doesn't have a job, but you work, they're sitting in your house all day long and they're using your fucking utilities to fuck up. Okay? That's what people don't realize. Okay? They may just say, well, I ain't using none of your shit. I'm just sitting here. I ain't even eating your food. Up. Nigga, but you using my motherfucking electricity and my water and bitch, you eating my motherfucking food the fuck up. That's what the fuck you doing. And you riding around in my goddamn car running my gas out okay so you end up paying more for some deadbeat nigga in your house versus it just being you by yourself now i'm pretty sure that the d is probably really that great you know why the dick is probably really that great because he ain't got um he ain't tired meaning he don't have a job so he's got all this energy from just sitting the fuck around all day and doing nothing with himself so he has worked himself up enough stamina and energy and time to where yeah this motherfucker could go all night probably he probably could really give it up and this girl jay she probably like nigga i want to go to sleep because i got a job to go to and i got work to fucking do in the morning okay so yeah i got shit to do and he feel like oh because he might hit you off with a little bit of his fucking rat trap dick that that's supposed to suffice for the water, the electric, the gas, the food, and the motherfucking rent, okay? Because you, you did not say you pay all of the rent, but I'm pretty sure you do. And he's talking about, did he this? Did she say when she gets worried about shit that he, he, he goes, stop worrying about it, stop worrying about stuff you can't control? You know what? I would have been like, oh, bitch, I can fucking control that shit. And the first thing that I'm going to control is your ass getting the fuck up out of here, Okay? That's what the fuck. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't let that motherfucker drive my car while I'm at work because why did his car get totaled? I don't know if y'all bitches think of shit like that, but if it were me, you ain't about to be riding my car all around the fucking town while I'm sitting at work, working hard, 
and you riding around fucking joy riding and luxury riding up in my shit while I'm at work all day. This is what I would do. Because sometimes women don't want to say too much. Just This is what the fuck I would do. I wouldn't put no fucking gas up in that shit. I would put just enough for me to get the fuck to work. Or better yet, why has he got your car? Is he dropping you off at work in the morning? Let me tell you something. If that nigga could get the fuck up and bring you to work, then he can get the fuck up and look for a job and get his own fucking job. Okay? If that were me, he would have been gone. I'm not about to be putting up with no nigga that ain't got no job. Nigga, I wouldn't care if you worked at motherfucking McDonald's. You got a job, right? You got something. And working at McDonald's will give you more motivation to find a better-ass job somewhere. So you won't have to be stuck fucking making 10-piece and 6-piece chicken McNuggets with McFlurries and shit. All right? Like on some real shit. This is where females and niggas, bitches, and just women and men in general get it twisted. There's a lot of women out there that will be so happy, um, Jade, to take your motherfucking man for you and take care of him. And I'm not saying that in a good way, okay? There are some women who just be down for all that shit. Like, they be so happy. They feel like because they take care of this nigga that he love her and he do anything in the world for you. Because he don't have no job. It's because cause you take care of him. First of all, that nigga can't do anything in the world for you because he ain't got no motherfucking job. So what the fuck is he doing for you? Oh, so he cleaned the bathtub out, he washed the clothes, and he cooked dinner. You might as well do something. You've been here all fucking day. You should have. Shit. You know what I'm saying? That's just my, that's how I feel about it. And like I be telling y'all all the fucking time, I don't have time for no non-purpose motherfucking men, okay? If you don't have no job, and you don't have no motivation and no goals in life, please don't fucking look at me, all right? Now, mind you, I already in, I'm in a relationship. And you know what I noticed? I meant to tell you guys this earlier. Men could be such thirst buckets, okay? When I say a thirst bucket, I mean a real motherfucking thirst bucket. So you guys know I walk my dog early in the morning, and now I don't walk at 6 o'clock in the morning because at 6 o'clock in the morning here in Arizona, it's fucking pitch dark outside. So I don't be wanting to walk on those walk paths because they be behind people's houses and shit. So I start walking at 6 and I'll go at 8 now once I bring the kids to school and stuff because it's light. Because I was carrying a flashlight with me or using my phone flashlight or I was wearing like the little flashlight thing on my head that you wear. I was wearing that. Um, and I was carrying... Um, my pepper spray okay like I don't want to have to do that early in the morning that's just doing too much and like I don't really know like pepper spray might not work for this crazy these crazy motherfuckers out there so I just be like you know what let me just stay in the house until 8 o'clock so anyway we walk in me and sugar and you know I got my little workout pants on and, you know I lost some weight and shit so I see you driving by me and you all with your head stretched out the motherfucking window. I don't pay that shit no mind because I find that to be really unattractive and disrespectful. Did you motherfucking turn your car the fuck around in the middle of Garden Lakes to come back and say, what's up? What's good? How you doing today? I was just, I just looked at him and I was like, if I didn't have a man, um, I still wouldn't talk to your fucking thirsty ass. And he was like, excuse me, you heard me. If I still didn't have a man, I wouldn't look and talk to your thirsty ass. Goodbye, and I kept it moving. What I mean by that is, nigga, I seen you looking at my ass as I was walking down the street. Don't try to turn the fuck around and kind of holler at me. Like, don't do that shit. That shit is so thirsty and thirst bucket like. Like, I hate when men do shit like that. That's so obvious, but some women will find that to be so fucking cute and unattractive, and they'll laugh about that shit and be like, <laughs> He thought I was cute. <laughs> he liked me. I gave him my number. Like, bitch, you gave him. You just gave out a booty call number. That's what the fuck you just did. You gave that nigga want a booty call from you. And if you want to fall for that shit, go right the fuck the head because you just as dumb as the rest of them. But I hate to see that woman that that just fall for anything and they just go for what the most stupidest shit that a man could tell them. That's why I said men are thirsty. There be some women that are thirsty too. Women are thirsty too, meaning Jade. There's somebody out there for Marcus ass. Trust me. It ain't you. It's definitely somebody out there. Another woman who would love to be able to take care of 
him and just be able to say that they got a man. And that's how some women are. They'll take care of a motherfucker. They will take care of a motherfucker nigga that don't work, buy his clothes, shoes, and every fucking thing else just to say that they have a fucking man, which is so lame and pathetic. Like, because for real, if you can't do nothing with yourself, do. Please don't do it the fuck over here. And I, like I say to y'all all the time, some if you in a relationship with somebody and they, they lazy like that and they don't want to work, that shit is real unattractive. I think that a man that is an able-bodied man and he don't want to work is so unattractive. Like, what the fuck can you do for me? Nigga, you can't even buy me a fucking number seven on the, on the menu at fucking McDonald's. And I don't even fucking eat McDonald's, but shit. You can't even do that shit for a motherfucker. So why the fuck would I want to deal with you? What the fuck would I do about that shit? Jay. <laughs> Let me tell you what the fuck I would do about that shit. He would be gone. I would let him know time is up. The, the lease is up. The lease of love is up. And you are definitely not acting crazy. She thinks she crazy. Hell no. Let me tell you something. People that tell you they want to be a football coach or they want to do this or they want to do that, that's cool. But if you ain't seen them do shit about it, they ain't, tr they ain't trying to better themselves, they not trying to do a fucking thing about it, then that shit don't mean a motherfucking thing. You could tell me all day till you blue in the face that I want to be a firefighter and I want to do this and I want to do that. You know what I'm saying? However, if you ain't showing me no fucking, um, sh if you're not showing me no type of, um, Okay, I'm sorry, but my daughter, Nathan, when I was just talking about who's 15, she just texted me, honey, look at the score I got. It's my finals for my history test. Okay, so she got 40, oh, so she's got an 85. Social studies, world history, oh, so 83.72. Okay, so she's somewhat happy about it, but y'all can't even see that, but listen. Oh, y'all can't see it, but she's happy. Um... SS World History, S1, E-O-C-A. I don't know what that means, but um, I guess I should... It's, I'm going to say congratulations to her because I'm going to... Congrats, honey. So proud of you. You know why? Because she takes her school education so serious. And I'm going to ask her, are you happy? Are you happy? Because she, 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 she'll get real pissed. Did somebody just send me some money? Oh, okay. Um, she'll get real pissed, so I had to ask her was she happy about it because I don't, you know, I don't want to assume. But I'm sorry if when when you like like I was saying, if you you could tell me all day to you gray in the face, to you blue in the face, I don't give a fuck what color you are, that you about to do this or you want to do that with your life or this is what you want to do. But I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm not falling for that shit. Like some bitches will be like. He about to, he want to be a firefighter, girl. Well, when's the last time he went to school? Oh, 10 years ago, but he want, he's got goals. I'm not trying to hear none of that shit until I see the shit. I'm not, I don't, I don't give a fuck if you could tell me that shit all day, every day, that that's what the fuck you want to do with yourself. Until I see that shit, I'm not, I'm not a believer. And that's unfortunate that I'd be feeling like that. Um, she said, yeah, I only got, um, six wrong, but I got 30, um, 37 right. Um, but I did really good. Okay, all oh, good for you. Good for you. So, you know what I'm saying? You could tell me that shit until you blew in the face. I'm not going to fall for any of that shit until I see it, literally see it. And I, you know what's so crazy? I'd be like that with my children too, unfortunately. I, I'm the same way with my kids because, you know, sometimes our kids say things to us just to pacify us. And, um,. I've, I've fallen for that enough times in life with relationships and people in general. So, for now on, I don't fall for that shit. I, if I see it, it's when I see it. To see it is to believe it. If you ain't showing me no type of um, proof, then I don't really want to hear about the shit. Okay? I'm, I'm dead ass serious. I really don't want to hear about the shit. Okay, so now it's time to use some of this bright and bougie. Okay, by my girl Passion Jones. I don't want to put too much because it's very powering. Okay, like, look. This is very powering glow. Okay? Like, very, very powering glow. Seriously. I'm very, and I'm going light-handed. This is not even all of it. You see me, I tapped a lot of it off. So this was just a little bit. This was like the bare minimum. And the bare minimum is enough, okay? 
Like, it all depends on what kind of glow you're looking for. But shit, this is enough, all right? Now, if I was to do, like, it heavy-handed, because I did it heavy-handed for the video, was I was just showing it off. Look, okay, you guys see that? Now, that's still not even heavy-handed. I, I still was like, because I got scared. This is like, her shit is scary. Like, this highlight is, seriously, this motherfucking highlight is scary because... You got to be, like, very sparingly with this shit. Oh, my God. Like, for real. Because if you don't, you going to see my motherfucking reflection. you going to see somebody's reflection. So if somebody come near me and they need, they, they need a mirror, I'm going to just be like, look, right there. Look, Do you see that shit? Like, that's light-handed. That's motherfucking light-handed, okay? Some of these fucking highlights, you got to fucking dig in them just to get, like, anything out of it. And that's light-handed. This is fucking light-handed. I don't know what to tell y'all, but this is like some very powerful glow. Fucking glow nista shit. This is a goddamn mirror. Mirror highlight. That's what the fuck she should call it. Next color should be called mirror because it's gonna you could see yourself through it. Like dead ass serious. The next highlight you make passion should be called mirror because you can see yourself through that shit. Somebody asks you, you got a mirror, you'd be like, yes, bitch, look. Right here. You can just look right here in my face and see it. Okay? Like, seriously. And that's light-handed. Could you imagine what heavy-handed is? Like, I'm scared to do heavy-handed because then what the fuck am I supposed to do? How am I going to get the shit off my face? Like, and it stays on. Like, seriously. It stays the fuck on. Like, it's not no cheap shit where it's like, uh, look, I had to dull it down with some contour. Okay? Like, <sighs> shit. Well, I'm going to have accidents. People going to be driving by and they're going to have car accidents and shit. That's not nice to say, but I'm just saying. Like, now look. I'm really trying to go light-handed with this, and I am. But, and then now, now look, I'm wiping it off and it still has a shine to it. So, it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to glow. I had to like really go light handed. The other night when I was doing like my demonstration. Bitches I was so fucking like medium handed. Like for real. So now I'm going to use 24. What am I going to use 24 carat? No I wanted to use Glow Nista. But yeah so what I would do sweetheart honey bunny. Is I would tell that dude he needs. It is time to go. He needs to either get a job. He got he look. He got thirty days to get a job. And when you look for a job, when looking for a job is a job, okay. And people fail to realize that. If you sit there and you look for one or two motherfucking jobs, then bitch, you're not looking for no job. You're just looking for an excuse, okay. That's what the fuck you doing. If you sit in there and you looking on the computer for like one or two jobs, then that means you're looking for a fucking excuse, cause that's nothing. When you look for a job, that shit takes time. You looking for a job. Is a, is a job that you ain't getting paid for. You know what I'm saying? Meaning you, your ass is up. You going out there. You looking for a job. You job hunting. Not sitting on your motherfucking computer looking for a job. Job hunting is looking for a job that you ain't getting paid for. Okay? That's a motherfucking job. To look for a job is a job. And you ain't getting paid for that shit. You, don't, you ain't getting no mileage money. You ain't getting no lunch money. You ain't getting no type of money. Okay? You hoping to get some motherfucking money. I'm just saying. So I would tell him like this. You got 30 days to have a job. Not to find one, but to have one and a fucking check. Okay? I'm not going to keep continuing this to pay for this stuff. You grown. You're a grown ass man. And you should be able to have a job. Motivation and goals don't come from just sitting around. That shit comes from going out there and working hard to find that shit. If you out there... Really okay, work so as I was saying, because I don't really don't remember what I was saying. Because I had to clear my goddamn memory card. And when I cleared that shit, it cleared my fucking head off. Um, but I know I was talking about, like, you know... Have some fucking goals. If you ain't got no motivation, then I don't know what to really tell you. I mean, I, me personally, I'm not going to fuck with nobody that don't have no motivation. And as you guys know, I already have somebody and they have motivation. They are a very motivated person despite their issues or not even their issues, but the things that they have gone through in life in general. They always was a hard worker. Sometimes maybe not too hard as I would expect to be or for them to have, want, or have wanted them to be, but... I guess over time, people do learn, like, listen, you either going to get it together or get going. So, really, Jade, I think that, in all honesty, you really need to have a talk with him and let him know, listen, you got 30 days. 
to come through with a paycheck, okay? For real, meaning a job, looking for a job. If he's taking your car, honey, I hope he's looking for a job as he's, as he's driving your car around and not driving to see the next bitch. And that's what, you know what, that's the kind of thing that I hate right there, like... You help a nigga out, and you, you help them, and you try to get them through some shit, and then they just take advantage of that shit, and then they start seeing you as a weak woman. You know what I'm saying? So you never want to look weak to any man. You don't want to look weak to an individual. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be that bitch where you weak in, in, as a weak individual. And I'm not saying that you are, but that may be how he's looking at you because you still got him around. And sometimes we got to put our foot down just to let that nigga know, like, listen, I'm not that bitch. You might think that's me, but that's not me. I was trying to look look out for you. And though some people may think that three years is a long time, it's really not in reality for the lifespan. Three years is a part of your life, but it ain't a huge chunk of your life. And you hate to feel like you've wasted three years of your life, but sometimes that time that you have spent with him allows you to grow and allows you to see like, you know what, the next nigga that come along ain't about to be like that. Like, I'm not about to allow him to do me like that. So it makes you a strong individual and it also teaches you along with those three years. Like, you know, I put up with this. I put up with that. You put up with it for a long time because if that nigga lost his job after four months, if that nigga didn't have one within six months, nigga didn't, I don't know what to tell you. Okay. But goodbye. Like, um, this girl right here about to go do her thing. Like, I know like some people might feel like, well, you know, just because he ain't got no job don't mean you can be with him. You don't have to be with him. I understand that. Like, okay, I'm not saying that everybody has to have a pocket full of money when you get with them. But if you have somebody and you're in a relationship with somebody and they don't have no goals and all they're doing is sitting around and doing nothing with their time, but driving your fucking ass crazy and driving the gas out of your car on E, then I think you really need to evaluate things. And like, I don't expect you to have all the riches and be rich and shit, but if you ain't got no job, that means you ain't got no money. And if you ain't had no job in a long time, that means you definitely ain't got no money. And what I got might be for the both of us, but right now, if you ain't got no job, you ain't trying to find no job, then what I got is for me. And like, I'm not saying because you got a baller that I want you to come through and have money because I want it. No, I want you to have a job because I want you to be able to afford things that you like just as well as I want to be able to afford things that I like. And I want us to be able to afford things together. I don't want you to come through with nothing on the table and you got to use me and take everything from me because I ain't about to give up all my shit. That's not about to happen. But if we working together on this and we both got something, then you know what I'm saying? You can have what I got, and I can have what you got. We can have what each other's got. We can put it in together. But if you ain't coming through with a goddamn thing, but sitting around driving my motherfucking car around all the time, then you crazy. And I'd be damned if I'm about to let some fucking non-working, non-purpose-ass motherfucking man drop me and drop me off to work in my shit, who he done totaled his car already. Girlfriend, you better get him a motherfucking bike and let him pedal his ass to the unemployment line or to some motherfucking job application site and get him a job and get him a resume. Listen, he can find a job being somebody's coach, assistant coach on the side, learning the skills. Because obviously he don't have them. Real motherfucking coaches that coach football, they had job skills. They worked. They might not have worked where they wanted to work, but they worked somewhere. That's where you meet people. That's where you never know who you're going to run into when you have a job. Okay? It's called a job because you need to get the job done. Like, I'm just saying. I say that shit to my kids all the time. Like, don't think that this job that you got right now is going to last you forever because it's not. And it's not my way of putting them down, but it's my way of letting them know, like, you know what? Strive for harder and strive for better because this shit is not going to make it in real world. You know what I'm saying? So, Jade, I mean, I'm being nice because if it were me, I would have been got rid of him. And I'm even being really nice by telling you to give him 30 days. Um, cause then it's like, you know what, you put in a, you put in a time limit on a relationship. In reality, I wouldn't give him no fucking time. I would be like, listen, listen, boo, you know what? I love you and all, but this is not working out between us. You know, I, I'm, I'm striving for more things in life and I understand that you, you have dreams and goals as just as well as I do, you know, and. I feel like, you know, this is not working out. This is not for us anymore because what I'm trying to help you with, when I try to see you with a job and I feel like you can do better, you're not trying to succeed in life with that. And for that, I just really can't be a part of that. Listen, let that nigga know. It's time to go. Let that nigga know. It's time to go. Let that nigga know. It's time to go.
I ain't trying to make that song out of it, but I'm just saying, let that nigga know it's time to go, bitch. Like, for real. So, I really wanted to do a third one because, you know, you see me, I already done finished my makeup. Like, that was super fast. You see, I did not have all them issues like I did last week by using new fucking tools and sponges and shit, which was perfect. And you guys, can you guys see yourself through, like, I'm telling you, passion, if you're watching this, you need to have, be calling your next highlight, mirror. Mirror glow. Mirror glow. Okay? Because... That shit is going to be so powerful that bitches are going to see their faces through that shit. Like, for real. Now, if y'all want to see me go heavy-handed on a motherfucker, then make sure y'all watch my up-and-coming video because I was, like, glowed the fuck out. I felt like the fucking tin woman. I know there ain't no tin woman, but I felt like the tin man from the fucking Wiz or the Wizard of Oz. I was, like, glowing. Y'all bitches probably seen. Y'all probably was like, what the fuck is that light in the sky? That was me, bitch. That was me. Then the second, the next one after that could be called Mirror Glow and Light in the Sky Glow. Like, I'm saying, I'm going to have to let her know this. I'm going to just send her the video link. But I'm, I swear, these things, for $10, these highlights, y'all, don't be heavy-handed. I'm let you like being heavy-handed because, I mean, this is just supposed to be my daytime look. Okay, I don't be wanting to glow that much, but I'm fucking glow the fuck up. Like, god damn. When, when I had to do my memory card, I was kind of trying to dull it down a little bit, but I'm going to just leave it as it is. I'm going to just let these hating ass bitches when I leave the house look at me and catch an attitude. Okay? I'm just saying. I mean, I like the glow. I like the motherfucking glow. For real. So... On that note, my dears, I really do want to do a second one, but, um, I mean a third one, but I'm going to save the best for next week because, um, I did, <clears throat> excuse me, I did do these ones that were very recent, well, not very recent, but we're back in the end of November. You know, I have to do them little by, not little by little, but I just do them, um, accordingly, um, accordingly, meaning, well, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this one, okay, I'm going to do this one. Okay, it's called Phoenix Advice. Hi, April. I don't usually reach out to personalities on the internet, but I have been watching you for several years now, and you have really touched my life. I started working for Arise in 2013 after seeing a video you did about working for Walgreens and Amazon, and I have turned on several of my friends and family to Arise thanks to you. The reason why I'm reaching out is because I am seriously thinking about moving to Phoenix. I am in a terrible relationship with a man that I caught cheating on me in 2014. He basically was living a double life for three years with this woman who was once our neighbor. April, everybody knew but me. Talk about embarrassing, humiliating, and infer inf infuriating. I have waited another three long years for them to leave each other alone, and it's just not happening. I'm 40 years old with a 12-year-old, a 3-year-old, and a 1.5-year-old with this man. And that's the reason why I stayed to see if things could or would get better. I didn't want to have any regrets by leaving right away, and now I am left with regrets anyways for staying so long. My mother moved to Phoenix three years ago, and I am now in my hometown all alone with no family members of my own. I don't know where else to go, and my mother is there, and I need an honest and unbiased opinion about Phoenix. How do you like it? Are there black men out there that are our age? Would you move there again if you knew what you would now? What moving service, if any, did you use? Can you give me, excuse me, guys, my nose is itching. Can you give me pointers on how much to make the move smooth? I'm in Michigan and anywhere has to be better than here. I feel like we are soul sisters because we've been through similar situations in our lives. We are the same age and we both might be living in Phoenix. You've always been a friend in my head, and I truly appreciate all that you do. I have followed you for many years. Thanks for your advice. If you would like to use my email for Real Talk Wednesday, please feel free. Your YouTube friend, we're going to call her Mika. So first of all, Mika, we ain't the same age, bitch. I'm 43. You 40, okay? So let's just get that straight. I'm older. I would like to say I was 40 again, but I would like to say I was 30 again, but you know it is what it is. So, oh, my nose is itching. So she want to move here. Uh, Mika is 40 years old. She got three little ones. She got a 12-year-old, a 3-year-old, and a one and a half year old with this man who was cheating on her for the past years with her motherfucking neighbor. And everybody in the town knew about that shit except for her. And she said that shit was embarrassing. You damn right that shit is embarrassing. You good. Because a bitch like me, I would have had to go crazy. Like, seriously, let me get my brush real quick. Okay, so Mika basically said that her man was cheating on her with a neighbor 
for years and everybody in the town knew about that shit. Everybody knew but her, okay? And yeah, that shit is embarrassing because you got people looking at you, talking about you, you know what I'm saying, speculating shit. While you out in public with this man, they looking at you laughing because that's how I see it as. They looking at you laughing. So that is very embarrassing. Second of all, I wouldn't have gave it no time. I wouldn't have waited for four or three years for them to leave one another alone. I would have left his ass the fuck alone. Once a dog, always a dog. And maybe maybe not once a dog, always a dog. However, if that nigga would have cheated with my neighbor and everybody would have known, then I couldn't fuck with him. It's one thing to cheat on somebody and the person doesn't know or the whole motherfucking town don't know. But when you got everybody knowing, you got everybody knowing that you cheated on your woman with some fucking scallywag bitch, then that's what it makes it so fucking embarrassing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is embarrassing. Yes, I am scratching my head with a fucking makeup brush. That shit is so fucking embarrassing. Like, who wants to go through some shit like that? Like, I'm saying, I've been cheated on. Yes, I'm pretty sure the best of us have. However, we don't want everybody in the world to know that we've been cheated on, okay? While we've been cheating, while the niggas cheating. Because that's embarrassing. Then when you see people out in public, they're like, oh, yeah, that's her right there. He cheated on her. You know what I'm saying? Like... That shit is that that shit is really embarrassing and I feel for you. However, what makes it even worse and more embarrassing is the fact that you was already fucking embarrassed like a motherfucker and you took his ass the fuck back and and got back with him. I wouldn't have gave a fuck if he had ten kids with me. I'm not going to be embarrassed anymore. It's one thing to cheat on somebody and the wife or the girlfriend finds out. But then when everybody already knows and you don't, that's so embarrassing and that's so humiliating. And like you said, it's infuriating. And they just like basically ridiculed you. Me personally, I think like I said before to y'all, I would have went to that bitch motherfucking house and I would have kicked her motherfucking door in. I told y'all before that shit happened to me. Now nobody knew about it but me and then I found out about it. You know what I'm saying? And he, cause he, he, he got caught and the girl that he worked with, she knew me. She knew he had a, he had a wife and a family. So bitch, you fucking knew about this shit. So I guess I got to go make guest appearances by knocking on your motherfucking door. Okay. I have no problem knocking on your motherfucking door, especially if you knew the fuck about me, but you still wanted to be trifling like that. Yes. I think Nay is trying to get in. Hold on guys. Okay. So Nay wasn't locked out. The door's unlocked, but it was a package from China, okay? So you already know what that means. There's some clothes up in this bitch. But as I was saying, like, um, I find it to be very embarrassing and humiliating, especially if everybody in the town knows what's going on in your relationship but you. That shit is far from okay. It's very, very embarrassing. So I wanted a down coat for this website because they wanted me to do a video for them. And I thought it was going to be puffy. Like, this is not what the fuck I asked for. How am I supposed to be warm in this shit? Hmm, you have to see about that. Anyway, so I wouldn't have, I would have definitely not have waited for dude. Oh, this is nay stuff. I would have definitely not have waited for dude to get his shit the fuck together. Like, on some real shit. If that's who he want to be with, if he want to lay down with a dog, then he going to lay down with a dog and catch fleas. And that's what the fuck he would have done. However, now it's time for you to move. And you, you want to move. Let me tell you something. Your mother is here. There is no reason why you shouldn't be, okay? I'm trying for the life of me to get my own mother to move here from New York City because I just feel like she's better off with me. Even though my sister is 30, about 32, yeah, 32, but she don't spend no time with my mother. She don't take care of her like that. She's always with her boyfriend and my mother be left alone. Now, my mother is 63 years old. She's not old or anything, but and she goes to work. She has herself a little holiday job because she finally... She retired from Sears because, you know, Sears closed, closed down. But she misses me and she misses being around me. So I feel like, you know, I've been trying for the life of me to get her to move here because this is where she needs to be. Now, mind you, I don't, when you say, there are there black men here? Yeah, they black men here. 
Um, they might not be the type of black men you're looking for. I don't really know what your taste is. However, in my poor part of Avondale, where I live at, there's some, you do see them, but I've, I've been told that if you go to Tempe, if you if you go to Tempe, that's where a majority of all the black people are at in Tempe. That's what I've been told by several women. And they was like, mm, the black men out there, girl, mm. So, and you know what's so funny? I don't have any friends to be able to hang out in Tempe to let you to, to find out. And I'm not even looking for no friends or no, no black man or no white man or no Puerto Rican man because I have one of my own. However, sometimes I don't think that we should, like, um, I don't know what the right word is, but I don't think that we should, like, be like, oh, well, I only want a black man or, oh, I don't, I only want a Chinese man or I only want a white man because you could be passing up on a good man regardless of his skin color. Because if you only limit yourself to only black men, that white man across the street could be like the best thing for you and treat you like a pot of gold, girl. So in all honesty, I wouldn't limit myself, limit myself to only black men. All right. I'm not saying that black men are going to dog you because any man could dog you. Black, white, Chinese, purple, pink, it all, they all could dog you. Just like a woman can dog you in any, any kind of race. However, um, the first thing that you need to worry about, sweetheart, is getting your life together, not no fucking man, okay? Because a man is going to put your ass in this situation. So the first thing you need to do is find yourself. Um, some people will say find Jesus, but I'm going to just say find yourself. So that way you get into the groove of things. I, I definitely would say move out here. If I was to, um, if, if I, if, okay, so, and then you ask me about um, if I was to move out here again or if I knew what I knew, would I have moved out here? Let me tell you something. When I first moved out here, I came to visit, and when I, where I was staying at, there weren't a lot of Hispanic people, meaning Mexicans. So when people would be like, oh, there's a lot of them, there's this and this and this and that of Mexicans, I didn't see it, okay, because I was in like some high city part of town where I was staying at in the hotel. Now, and I liked it. I liked from what I've seen, I liked it. So when I moved out here, in Avondale. Now, Avondale is not the ghetto or anything. Anywhere can be the ghetto. And don't have anything to do with anything. But when I moved out here in Avondale, I was very overwhelmed with the culture. Meaning, it was kind of like a culture shock to me because I did not expect to, there to be so many Hispanic people, meaning Mexicans, around me. And they, they, they didn't speak English. So when I first moved out here, like I said, it was very overwhelming. And it seemed like all I would hear was Hispanic, Hispanic language, like the, the, the Spanish language, over and over. And it started feeling like to me, like you ever watched Charlie Brown as a kid and Charlie Brown would go to class and you would never know what his teacher was saying. Charlie Brown would know what she was saying, but you as the person that's watching this cartoon did not know what his teacher was saying because she would be like, wah, 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 wah. this is what it started sounding like in my ear. I didn't know what they were saying and it was just like clouding me. It was just like a cloud and plus, I moved here in the summertime, so it was like 120 degrees outside, which I was not used to. So for one, the heat made me motherfucking miserable as hell, and also not being able to understand these Hispanic people, and it seemed like it was all coming to me at one time, so I was just like, oh my God, this is like too much for me. And then on top of that, every time I would turn around, it would be somebody pregnant um, with hickeys all over them necks. And I know y'all like, what? There, a lot of Hispanic women, young women, would have these hickeys all over their necks okay i have never seen so many hickeys in my motherfucking life and i kid you not i did never see so many hickeys in my life like you would see hickeys on like young kids or teenagers you know what i'm saying but these was grown-ass women like my age like in their 20s 30s they had hickeys when i when i say hickeys i don't mean like one hickey they would have their whole necks and then they would be pregnant so i don't know if this is like their mark to put on their women i don't really know but it started being very overwhelming to me until like after maybe like a year i got used to it and i was able to communicate with them not meaning that i know and i learned spanish because i really didn't but that's what motherfucking apps for, are for on your phone but also i got to know them as a culture a lot better and listen, the same way that I'm hearing them talking, like wah, 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 they're hearing me as an American the same way because they may not understand me, I may not understand them. So it's the same thing. But I will tell you this, as the Mexicans that live out here, there are a lot of them that are shady, just like there are a lot of black shady people and a lot of white shady people and a lot of Chinese shady people. There's shady people of all cultures. But they are, there. I have met some that are very nice and they work so hard for their money and they, they you know what I'm saying so and the same thing goes for every culture so but for me 
when I when I get my car fixed, I only take it to Miguel. I don't let nobody else touch my car. I've lived out here for four years, and I've taken my car one time to the car place to get fixed, where they fucking rape me without any fucking lubrication. Okay, ever since then, Miguel has my car. Um, that do my lawn work. I always let the same person, this Mexican guy, he always does it. So. It is a culture shock at first, but let me tell you something. Once you get used to it, I think anywhere you go may be a culture shock. That's just like if, if a white person was put in, like, Harlem, some people might like it, in a predominantly black neighborhood, then they would feel like, oh, my God. They might feel like it's a culture shock to them, you know what I'm saying, with the street slang or whatever. They might feel that way, but for me, I love it here, and if I was to have the chance to move here again, if I, you know what I'm saying, decide to leave, I would definitely come back because the weather is always nice, though in the first summer that you come here, you will be very annoyed by the heat when you first get here very first summer because your body temperature is not used to it and then in the winter time which is no like in december and january february you're going to be walking around with a tank top on while other motherfuckers are going to have coats on i don't wear a coat i wear a hoodie but it does get cool in the evenings now because i've been here my body is acclimated to this temperature so i've been here for four and a half years so i love it in the summertime when it's 115 degrees outside it's like oh what girl please that it ain't hot outside because you get used to it so and there's so many things to see it's always sunny so when it's so much sun you look forward to a gloomy day you look forward to a gloomy motherfucking day but I will say this, but I love it here. There are some people that are nice and there are some people that aren't, but you get that wherever the fuck you go. But if I had to change change it, I would definitely stay here. But sometimes I don't like to hinder myself from things. So I think like if I wanted to go somewhere else, like I don't know about Cali because Cali is very expensive and it's like fast paced. So for me, um, like I don't really be into like the fast paced stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I like to I like I like my life as it is. And I it's very affordable here and everything is like very new here also. So I, I like I like being here. So I definitely would say that I think that this is great for you to build yourself up and step away from things. And as far as moving here, um, I use this service called American Van Lines. Let me look it up real quick. I'm going to put you guys on. Well, no, I'm going to look it up right now because I be forgetting to um, put information sometimes in the description box, which sucks. So I really want to tell you guys now. So hold on. Let me, let me put it in. American Van Lines Moving Service. The stupid thing. American, I said. Okay. So it's American Van Liners, professional moving service. So I had called like a bunch of different movers at my time of living in Schenectady. And some of them were quoting me $10,000 and shit. And I was like, damn, I'm never going to move. So I called this one one day, American Van Lines. And just so happened that it was so funny because she was like, well, we can do the entire move. It, it goes by your weight. But we can do it for um, the entire move for you for like three thousand dollars, and I was like, "What?" Um, and so this is how it goes. And I'm gonna give you a phone that phone number right now. They're called American, like American Van, like a van, minivan. American Van Lines, Lines, L I N E S. So American Van, B is in Victor, A N Lines, L I N E S dot com. Their phone number is eight 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 two nine six. Five four five eight. That's eight 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 two nine six five four five eight. Okay, so they go by. This is how they move. So they don't just move you by yourself. Like you know how some companies they'll just take your shit and they bring it right over. So it took about three weeks for my belongings to come to my home here. So what they do is they come to your home and they you know make sure you have everything boxed up. They take your stuff and they put it in their truck. They came and picked my stuff up in a rider truck, those yellow trucks, and they brought it back to New York City. All right depending on where they're located at when they come to pick you up. They bring it back to their warehouse and they weigh your stuff. And then they mark each of your things. So I had all these red tags on all of my things, okay? And they put your name on it and a number. And all of these boxes and things that I had had red tags on them, red big stickers on them. So 
and they wrap everything. So they wrap your furniture drawers up with um, plastic and everything so nothing gets scratched. And what they do is they bring it to their warehouse. And when they get another load, okay, so meaning it wasn't just me. They had, they needed some more items to travel to the west coast with so meaning they're gonna take my stuff and they might take Raymore Flanagan stuff and they might take Walmart stuff in this big ass trailer like this shit is huge but everything is sectioned off so that's what makes the process a lot cheaper versus they're just your shit and your shit gets here right away so three weeks may seem long to some but in reality it's not really long because ten thousand dollars is a lot versus three i paid like three thousand one hundred and ninety eight dollars for my entire move which was great and i gave them a nine hundred and seventy four dollar deposit okay and the rest i paid okay so my move was barely cheap i didn't really get rid of too much the, the things that I did get rid of was my winter clothing and I did get rid of like my living room set which was the piece of shit anyway after a while and um, I got rid of um, like unnecessary things like I didn't come empty-handed my dressers and everything was here my mattress my bed like you know what I'm saying things that I wanted to keep I kept but I damn sure didn't need no winter clothing all my makeup all my wigs my shoes my clothes everybody everything all my TVs everything so I didn't leave empty-handed um, but I would definitely say use them and you'll give it a price quote and they'll ask you for which room, each how many rooms and what you have and what. So that way they'll have like an idea of how much stuff you want to bring. And if you don't need it, then don't keep it. You know what I'm saying? Certain things, sometimes it's hard for people to get rid of stuff, but the more you keep, the more it's going to cost you. So like, you know, I really wasn't aware that the wait, waiting process was going to take my take me three weeks to get it. Um, I really thought it was going to be a week. So I ended up going to my dad's house in Pennsylvania for that week, just so that way I wouldn't come here to an empty home. Well, I, you know, I left my dad's house the 6th of July and my stuff still wasn't here. So, you know, it was, you know, it's a process to drive here, especially it takes longer to drive here in one of those bigger trucks because for one, they're limited on how many hours they can drive because it's a law. So they can only drive but so many hours a day when you have these huge delivery trucks. That's for one, which I was very unaware of. So you have to keep that in consideration that these huge ass trailers and, and double wide trailers, they can't drive too far for too long because that is a law. They have a, they have a time slot that they keep and they they are to show this to certain destinations when they come through so you know what I'm saying if they are driving over a certain hours they can lose their license so you have to keep that into account like okay that's why it took a little bit longer than normal you know what I'm saying but what's so cool about it is they when they unload your stuff they bring it to whatever room you want it to be in and they will put your shit together if you ask them to it's not anything extra it's part of it's already included they ain't packing your shit up for you but and they're not unpacking it but if you have furniture that needs to be put together like tables or beds because they did it for me they will put those together for you they'll put them in whatever room you want them to put it in you just direct them of where to put it um, and I think that they're very affordable but they're also very professional um, as far as did anything get broken in the move um, I think like one thing like the bottom of the table the slide thing was missing but they were replace stuff they have a paperwork where you say what was missing I didn't have anything that was missing I got everything that I asked that I had because they also give you record of what they took so everything was accounted for um, it's just a, a waiting process of like three weeks maybe not even that long to, but you know what I'm saying depending on how far you live I lived all the way on the East Coast so they came all the way over here so Michigan is a lot closer than New York is so I wouldn't think that your time frame would be three weeks like mine but I would definitely use them um, and I, I do like it here because it's very very uh, it's a learning experience for me but it's also a very good opportunity for my children um, and so I do like it. so yeah but you guys I know I would definitely say give it a shot your mom is here so why would you want to be somewhere else where your mom is it it's time to get away from that guy he's not even worth your time sweetheart you know what I'm saying there are other things to do in life besides sitting around and waiting for some man to change if that nigga ain't changed now bitch he ain't about to change so on that note I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk make sure you check out passion Jones's highlight Glonista 
collection because it's so well worth it. It's ten dollars. If y'all ain't got twenty, just buy one at least because one is enough. Like y'all bitches are glow for real. I'm saying. And on that note, I love you guys. Um, I gotta go. The uh, stay deep and deep delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys on a soon to come video. Also, have a great, great, great holiday. Um. Because I think Christmas is this coming Monday, right? Listen. Yes, it is. So, yes. Yes, hunties. Yes. Merry motherfucking Christmas. Okay? Merry Christmas. I hope you guys get everything that Santa, that you asked Santa for. And, you know, and you didn't get a bag of coal underneath that tree and shit like that. But I hope you guys have an amazing Christmas. And um, also, a happy new year. Don't drink too much. I got to buy some groceries for Christmas. I forgot. It was Monday. Shit, I got to I buy some other shit, too. Uh -huh. I love you guys. I'll see y'all soon. What? Yeah. Real trap shit.